Cameras are complex devices that allow for the creation of amazing work for a huge variety of purposes. Photography extends well beyond art, including journalism, science, engineering, defense, marketing, and more. In this series of videos, I will be explaining some common terms and topics related to cameras, but keeping them quick and easy to understand. Sadly, this means I won't be able to get into the most fun aspect, the physics, and some components will need to be referred to or thought about as black boxes. Join me in this journey to explore the camera. Today's video is an introduction and a brief history of cameras. Cameras, as we know, are very recent. The idea of copying a real-life image onto a plane is very old. I'm not talking about drawing or painting. These are manual techniques that require lots of effort and training. But cameras themselves, or at least the idea of how they may work, has existed for centuries. The camera obscura, or pinhole camera, is the original device used. This involved having a dark room with a very small opening or pinhole on one end. The other end would have the image outdoors projected onto it. At first glance, this seems very odd and unrealistic. How is the image in focus? Well, if we think of the light as rays, we can see that the light rays can only go onto the projecting wall through this pinhole. Without the pinhole, light from everywhere would overlap the light from the object being imaged. But the pinhole allows for light reflected from a specific point on an object to land on a specific point on the wall. Each part of the wall only has light from the opposite side of the object. Without a lens, we can actually get an image displayed in real time. There are several downsides to this technique, but it was used to aid painters in the Middle Ages. The idea of a pinhole will show up later in another episode concerning aperture. With the invention of lenses and focusing mirrors, light was manipulated in a way to obtain focus with a larger light opening than a pinhole. Film cameras were invented in the late 1800s, exposing a photoreactive chemical film to the light from a scene that had gone through lenses to focus the rays. The film had to then go through a long chemical process to be able to see the picture taken. Charge coupled devices, or CCDs, and complementary me metal oxide semiconductor, or CMOS sensors, began to rise in the late 1900s, and now we all enjoy easy and quick access to photography via cameras right in our phones. We can see the pictures right after we took them and send them to anyone in the world within seconds. Cameras one traditionally thinks of are visible light cameras, as they are the most widely used, but cameras for other regions of the electromagnetic spectrum exist. Sensors exist for all the way from radio waves to gamma waves, and are all radically different. Outside the realm of light, electrons can also be lensed and focused to see very small things that we cannot see with light. Optical cameras, though, range from UV to visible to infrared, each with different purposes, even giving us thermal vision. Some of these topics will be discussed further in other videos. With that introduction done, I can tell you what to expect from future videos, ranging in topics. While a dedicated video might not be made for each topic, each should be covered at least sparsely in videos. Topics include how a sensor works, sensor sizes, DSLR and mirrorless cameras, exposure, lenses, MTF curves, stabilization, pictures, video, color space, demosaic and demayering, enhancements to the images, thermal imagers, and electron microscopes. It takes time to release these videos, but if you want to know when new videos come out, you can subscribe, but you might also see other unrelated gaming and miscellaneous uploads in the meantime. That brings me to the end of this video. Thanks for watching it, and I hope you learned something new.